Hello, welcome to another session on digital supply chain with myself, Steve Chittenden uh, from SAP. Today, we're going to be talking about a really interesting topic of machine learning, uh, often called artificial intelligence in our world. And one of the things I want to start off with is really just a, a brief description of what is the difference between artificial intelligence, the different levels of that, and what are we dealing with within our system in terms of what we call machine learning. Uh, I really don't like the term artificial intelligence much because it does tend to bring up some uh, rather negative connotations and people start talking about sci-fi movies and things like that. Um, so obviously when we talk about artificial intelligence, we need to make sure that uh, we keep it real and we talk about what is machine learning. Um, obviously there's been lots of um, rather uh, over the top reports from the press about uh, robots learning uh, artificial intelligence and everything else. So I really want to try and uh, keep this all about what we can actually do now. So let's talk quickly about artificial intelligence and the different terms that are used around that. So AI, as it's known, is a broad area of computer science that makes machines seem like they have human-like intelligence. And what we really have today and what we can really interact with is kind of known as um, artificial narrow intelligence or machine learning. That's really where we have a program designed to perform a specific single task. Uh, the system can do that task very, very well based on a specific data set and decisions that it can make. Where people go a little bit sci-fi with this and they start talking about, oh, you know, it's all a bit scary, is where people talk about artificial general intelligence. And this is where the um, artificial intelligence is so strong that it can successfully perform any intellectual tasks uh, that a human being can, and it exhibits human intelligence. This is sci-fi stuff right now, and we're quite a long way away from achieving those goals in terms of decades. Um, some people may argue with that, but it's, uh, it's not what we have in terms of machine learning within our system. And where we start getting uh, really interesting is where people start talking about artificial superintelligence. And this is where, uh, obviously, AI will surpass uh, human intelligence. But let's get back to reality. Let's talk about machine learning because that is that has current applications right now to our IT systems and can help us do things better. So let's talk about some of those different systems. And when we talk about machine learning, I really want to talk about machine learning in the supply chain. And let's, uh, let's talk about how we've evolved in that area of machine learning. So obviously in the 60s to 80s, we had mainframes, then we went to client server, and now in the noughties to, to 2010, we'll start talking about the cloud and mobile, big data and all those types of things. And now we're moving into this era of what we call intelligent technologies, where we're starting to build uh, the Internet of Things, where all our different devices and um, our different um, systems can all talk to each other, and we're starting to build what we call the intelligent enterprise. A lot of this is driven by our uh, ability to do in-memory computing now, and obviously take feeds from lots of places. And what does this mean for us as organizations is it allows us to do a lot more high-value tasks. So commonly, if we look at this chart here, um, in the 60s to 80s, obviously, there was a lot of repetitive tasks, a lot of data entry, a lot of people using um, the system, actually processing transactions and what have you. As we see more and more automation coming through, what we're starting to see is those repetitive tasks get reduced through the digital economy and obviously the digital uh, network and, of course, digital transformation, uh, reducing paperwork, uh, reducing even emails and such and, uh, and so forth and working collaboratively with other partners and business partners through our system, therefore allowing our users and our employees to concentrate on high value tasks. And that's really what this is all about. So how do we do that? Uh, you may have seen these types of slides before from SAP, but essentially what we talk about here is having this idea of the intelligent technologies uh, being the intelligent core suite. And what that's around is saying we have our in-memory digital core, and what that allows us to do is to look at lots of data very, very quickly. Our transactional layer and our application layer being the same, therefore we can actually move things through that system very, very quickly and actually have those components checked, used, uh, and obviously some of this machine learning becomes capable because we have that HANA database where it's in-memory and it can check things and, and 
process lots of data very, very quickly. So let's uh, concentrate, we're going to concentrate today on uh, machine learning in the digital supply chain, which is mostly around uh, integrated business planning. There are, of course, um, lots of machine learning bits and pieces in our core S4 system as well, uh, but we're not really going to look at those too much in this session. There are machine learning elements within all of our um, offerings, and we've talked about our cloud offerings around Arebo and Concur, etc. Um, there's lots of um, uh, machine learning elements in that as well. But let's concentrate on IBP today. So where do we sit within our future innovations focus with an IBP? Well, obviously, we've got a few different elements to this. One is obviously the usability, the visualization, making that better, and process automation within that. Uh, we're also trying to um, put in this machine learning and this advanced planning where we have uh, sophisticated al algorithms and uh, those types of things. So let's take a quick look at some of those and, uh, and how they then affect us. So what areas can we actually uh, play with at the moment? Well, we've got some stuff available right now. So in our available area, obviously within our demand planning and demand sensing, our visibility and uh, exception handling, uh, some of our forecast accuracy stuff, and where we're starting to do POCs with customers and using their data to do stuff, obviously we're going into more uh, advanced areas around forecast automation, uh, data management and operational excellence, and a really interesting topic around this idea of self-learning supply chain. So let's dive into a few of those a little bit. So what can we do now? What, what do we have? Obviously in the demand sensing, we've got our pattern recognition, uh, and our SAP algorithms, which are allowing us to actually see all that stuff in there. Um, one of those new ones is this idea of gradient boosting, which was released in IBP uh, 1811, um, allowing us to improve forecasting, reduce stock outs, and obviously lower safety stocks, which is what we all want to do. And one of the main components of this, of course, is to try and free up time from planners' capacity to, to allow them to concentrate on better things. Uh, here's just a quick example of this uh, in the system. So here we can see what's the main input. It was, in this case, sales history, but that could, of course, be uh, consum consumable items against assets or anything else. And what it's doing is, of course, it's using the statistical forecast here. The way it gets interesting is uh, the gradient boosting down the bottom here is talking about number of trees and the tree depth in terms of how deep is it going to go to actually learn how to do that better. So just a, a quick uh, look at that one. So when we talk about forecast accuracy, there's a whole bunch of different things we can do in here. Obviously, we just talked about gradient boosting, but uh, short-term demand patterns and accuracy. Uh, one of the things we're, we're trying to do in terms of POCs at the moment is around forecast level optimization. Uh, proposing best fit uh, forecast modeling is already happening in the system. That's there already. So there's lots of different areas we can use machine learning. It's already happening. It's already in the system. Um, so when we talk about machine learning, this is another example uh, in terms of visibility and exception handling. This was delivered in IBP 1808. <clears throat> uh, this, obviously, we already have custom alerts within the system, which are based on uh, static rules. But what this tends to do is to give us sometimes too few or too many alerts. So what the system can start to do now is to start to learn where those threshold values are within those alerts and start to tell us you know, which ones are actually pertinent to us to take action on. So quite interesting uh, use of machine learning. Um, and again, this um, is just an example here of, of the actual app itself. And um, we've obviously got the, the alert rules at the top here. What is it doing? And then down the bottom here, what are the machine learning rules around that to, to add to that? Um, I won't go into these in too much detail, but uh, automatic exception handling and decision support, obviously, we get that uh, nice um, user dashboard there so we can see what's going on. Okay, so let's move on to some other areas we can actually uh, use this for. Machine learning cases for data management and operational excellence, so some of the things we're doing there. Anomaly detection in batch jobs. So what this is talking about is a recommendation for when we should be scheduling those batch jobs and ongoing. Um, batch job optimization, and of course, anomaly detection for master data. What's going on with the master data? Uh, has it gone wrong? Should we be loading it in a different way? Those types of things. Okay, so this next topic is really interesting when we talk about the self-learning supply chain. 
So what this allows it to do is by the actions taken by our users is to determine data patterns and come up with, over time, a state and, and actually execute corrective measures on its own. So this is where users have made decisions and changed things, but actually the system learns those, those changes and takes them forward. So it does this in a number of different phases. Automation and visibility into exceptions. So this allows you to actually see those manual, um, those trigger those manual interventions that are going on. This is the users doing stuff. And system collection of data around those user patterns. And where we see similar cases in the past, it uses those to recommend courses of actions based on those cases. Now in the future, obviously the next stage of this, of course, is it self learns those patterns and executes them automatically. Therefore, the humans don't need to do anything. The system is actually learning and making those adjustments itself based on pre-learned data. So the, some of the different um, areas around uh, machine learning that we're looking at for this uh, self-learning supply chain are system proposals for requisitions, uh, similar material suggestions, lead time recommendations, uh, min-max uh, inventory levels, so on and so forth. So some really interesting parts of this. So just uh, where are we going as an organization in terms of machine learning? We have a, a customer work group for machine learning in the supply chain. The objective is to really create a common understanding of these cases and priorities and really identify where we should be uh, focusing our uh, development on machine learning. And that's happening right now. Um, if you'd like to get involved in those types of things, please feel free to reach out to me and we can uh, get you involved in those areas if you wish. One of the, the services that we can offer um, from SAP is as part of our Leonardo offering, we can actually do a discovery service with you. And what this is all about is essentially uh, meeting with your team, going through where you may be interested in this approach of machine learning or other innovation areas. And we have a predefined uh, service scope, which we can actually come and talk to you about, have a look at the different phases that are involved around discovery. You know, what is it that we want to do? Analysis, identification, ideation and prototyping, and of course, an action plan to actually put it into place. So um, if you're interested in that, or your organization would like to discover more about this, we are uh, keen to get involved with you. So just uh, a very quick um, session on machine learning. What is it? Why is it important? And some examples of where we are currently using it in our software. Thanks very much for listening.